Taylor has over 2.7 million in live tournament earnings, the biggest score of which was the Bay 101, which happened less than a week ago. He took first place for over 1.2 million. In addition to his poker accolades, winning the 2010 Card Player Online Player of the Year. His name online was Tapar. Yep. Long time online poker legend. Well, nobody. Oh, excuse me. Ravi bo uh, flops bottom pair here on ace king six. Three on the turn doesn't change anything. That's Taylor bets out and Robbie quickly calls. And Taylor is going to bet again. Uh, That's not, not even a question. A I call. Curious as to why Taylor. So why Taylor chose to bluff with that hand there. But it does seem like Taylor does do quite a bit of bluffing with hands that don't have that much equity. Yeah. Something I have picked up on from Taylor is that specifically in pots against Ravi, he, he has tended to bet rather small when he is bluffing and rather large when he has value hands. That's probably a good tactic against him. Yeah. Now, of course, the that was different when he, w he got to the river against Jesse in the hand where Jesse had Jack 10, I believe he bet closer to 60% pot in that hand on the river, getting Jesse to fold his top pair there. And here Taylor looks down at ace 10 of spades on the button. That was a pretty sick bluff by Taylor. I mean, it was a triple barrel with no equity and in a spot where every single draw on the board missed with the middle card pairing. But it's like it's like I said, okay, that bluff would have been the worst bluff of all time against Ravi. <laughs> but it makes plenty of sense against Jesse, because Jesse's sitting there like, why would you ever bluff this river? Right. That would be a terrible idea. Therefore, I can't be good. <laughs> You're too smart to bluff this river. And here we have something interesting happen, something we haven't seen a at Ravi all. A Ravi three bet. A Ravi three bet out of the small blind with Jack Queen. We, have, we haven't seen any Ravi three bets. Like, I don't know if this, this might be the first Ravi three bet in eight hours. Yeah. Seriously. Like, we saw the call and then back raise four bet with aces. But, but Taylor is not going to go anywhere with ace ten of space. No, he's got the ultimate flatting hand. What the? Oh, okay. I think he's count counting out his chips here. Yeah, it's, I was going to be real surprised if he just slid the pinks in there. Call. That's what we're expecting. Yeah, Maybe trying to elicit some type of yeah. tell from Robbie, but nothing more than posturing. Uh, yeah, that well, is all Taylor. Five, it's a very good flop for Taylor. He... He flops a wheel draw, he flops two over cards, and he, of course he flops an up flush draw. <laughs> Robbie checks checks the board pretty quickly. Escape Taylor quickly escape. checks behind. What in the hell? I'm not a big fan of that check at yeah. all. Yeah, let's go. Now Robbie, with nothing but queen high reaching for chips, perhaps thinking well, my hand looks a lot like ace, king, or ace, queen. Yeah, I think this this bet's pretty reasonable. Um, the 
problem is I don't think it really gets anything in Taylor's range to fold. I don't know what can Taylor. I mean, it, have these Broadway cards. Yeah, Broadway that, cards. That's yeah. Yeah. When Taylor continues on the turn, I I, I wouldn't bluff the river. Just in case. Now this is a big pot. There's two million chips in the yeah. pot. Taylor has 2.7 million behind, so 2.7 million effective behind. Robbie, thinking about what he wants to do here. Don't do it, Robbie. Ravi does think better of, of it and checks. And now Taylor is going to bet here. He's going to bet a size where hopefully he can be looked up by a hand like eight high. <laughs> Ravi does so choose to, to make another interesting call on the river. And he does bet less than one fourth pot. And this should be an easy fold here for Ravi. And he does let it go. Taylor picks up that one. Taylor outflops Jesse here with King Four versus King Six on King Ten Four. We have another pot where Jesse limps a small blind. Another bet's 80,000 and wins. Here are the updated chip counts. Jesse Rockowitz, just shy of 2 million, and then Taylor and Ravi are very close in chips. Taylor is the chip leader with 4.85 million chips, and Ravi with 4.55 million. So we're back in a familiar situation, Tony, where Jesse is the short stack. Robbie and Taylor are battling back and forth for supremacy. 
and we have been three-handed for a long time at this WPT final table. Yeah, we really have. This is one of the longest three-handed matches I've seen. Uh, remember one of our previous final tables, four-handed, lasted uh, a good five hours, but this is uh, this has got to be approaching four or five hours of three-handed, right? Yeah. Now the longer the match goes, does it does it benefit the pros? Does it take Ravi off his game? More so being an amateur because yes. he's not used to it. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think Taylor's got years of experience of playing poker for eight to ten hours at a time for a week on end. Uh, Ravi does not have that. Jesse, too, of course. Although my guess is cash sessions are a bit shorter than tournament sessions. Ravi folds a 10-7 out of the small blind. We'd seen him defend that hand in the yeah, small blind that earlier. Hand. with the 8-6 of spades on the button. He makes it 180, and now Jesse has ace-jack in the small blind. Pretty sure he's just going to go all in, right? Well, well he, has, he has 23 and a half big yeah. blinds behind. I would expect him to be making a three bet here. He does go all in. Yes, he has declared himself all in. Taylor folds his threes. Count was in question. And Ravi says, give me a count. Huh. One million nine hundred and fifteen thousand total. One million nine hundred and Ravi will let it go. And Ravi will hold. Definitely makes me wonder uh, if this was an hour long poker tournament. What happened in the lead up such that these guys reached the final table with such deep stacks? I mean, there must have been some serious confrontations. Yeah. Coolers and whatnot. Now, you do prefer a shove there to a three bet with 24 big blinds? Um, I think it's close. I don't know if one is definitively better than the other. Um, it's a little tempting with that hand to just, you know, go 3x and let Ravi make an overly loose call. Right. And then rip most of But then, flops. of course, what happens when, when the board comes, you know, 10, 7, 5 with two it's diamonds? Probably just all in. Yeah. Just shrug all in. Yeah. But when the board comes four, five, six with two diamonds, now you can check fold. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? Considering what I've seen Ravi do, I'm not sure there's any textures of check folding. Wow. Yeah, I'm just anticipating that Ravi is. You know, and we've seen him peel stuff like eight deuce suited. You know, if you have some sense that he's just peeling a ton uh, of three bets there, as long as they're not all ends, there might not be a texture that I check fold on. I don't know. You have see ace jack. If it, maybe if it came like. Eight, seven, five, monotone in a suit you didn't have, or something, something really extreme. But otherwise, I'm just, I just can't imagine myself letting Ravi have that pot when I think that he's his flatting range is some huge it. percentage of his opening range. Whoa! What was going on here? Duh. So just to recap what happened there, Jesse limped the button. Taylor raised about three times the big blind, 
And Ravi straight went all in for how many big blinds effective with Taylor? About 60? Yeah. And he wins the pot. But it maybe A7 is a favorite hand of Ravi's. Earlier we saw him four bet the A7. So he certainly... You think it might be uh, something superstitious? It could be his favorite hand. Sounds like our blinds are going up, if I'm hearing Ben right there. Yes, 51. Well, I'll tell you what, I got 25 minutes. For two people to get knocked out. I can't believe I'm going to win that fish bet. <laughs> Taylor min raises to 200,000. What will Ravi do now? Just call. Ravi will call the 200,000. Jesse with the queen eight. Is he going to peel for one of his remaining 20 big blinds? He certainly will. <coughs> yes, he will. Oh. And Jesse will call the 200,000. Everybody misses on ace king deuce. Ravi's been so sticky, he still might manage to win this pot, but I think he'll check full to Taylor. Jesse takes a long time before checking. He does. I guess he's balancing for the times. He has something to really think about. But I don't think I've ever seen him lead in yeah. spots like this. So. That's just it. I don't really understand why he's doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I told you that he might still find a way to win the spot. Here comes Robbie with his pocket fives. Seriously though, he just doesn't fold pairs. But now this is a this is a board that is a very good candidate for a multiple barrel bluff. Yeah. Out of out of Taylor, he doesn't have any equity in the hand. This is what would be called a brute force bluff. It's on this type of board texture where, based on the pre-flop action, your hand is is your range is just stronger than your opponent's range, so that by the river you could render most of their range bluff catchers. Taylor opts not to double barrel he's on the not queen. Gonna, not going to bluff that card. And he's not going to bluff the deuce most likely. However, we have seen Taylor make some interesting river bluffs. Yeah, but now he's realizing that Ravi just refuses to fold any type of pair to him. Ravi reaching deep Ravi. for chips. Thinking about turning the pocket Ravi, fives no, into a bluff you're going to be okay this time, but no! Oh, Ravi. Ravi bets 900,000, turning the pocket fives into a bluff. And what is Taylor thinking about? The weather? I don't know. You play the board, don't you? <laughs> it just mucks. Turns out, no. You have a fold. Okay. I have a pair. I think he's going to show them. You don't want to see that, he tells them. We've seen Taylor tank for quite a while on the river before folding hands. It, it seems pretty obvious that he's going to fold unless he's considering raising in, in these spots. But in, that's a spot where I don't think Taylor would ever be considering raising. So here, Robbie on his button with 9-4 offsuit. This seems like it would be one of the hands that he would fold. And he does. One of the rare few. 
Jesse, Jesse with ace five. Spots. Ace five, 18 bigs. Tony, this is your specialty. What are we doing? Ugh, gross. Um, yeah, that's an option. Going all in. I think that's what I would do. That's probably just the right play. Everything else seems bad. It just sucks so bad if you raise and get flatted. You can't fold. Can't no, folding really is out of the limp. question. I would say limping. I would prefer a limp to a raise. To a shove? No, to a to a raise. To a raise, yeah. I'd rather limp than like 2.5x. Yeah. Because then you could consider like limp jamming. I still think shoving is the play. Yeah. But he's like right around the peak amount of big blinds that I just rip it with. And I think that's a conversation that they're having over at the Royal Flush Bars. Yeah, she's what like, what's your shoving range there with 18 big blinds? <laughs> And he's like, um, I don't know, like jack seven suited plus, <laughs> uh, ace deuce plus, pocket deuces. Wow, he, he's read he's read Tony Dunst's poker book, hasn't yeah. he? Deller completes a small blind here, pocket threes. I just like that whenever we flash to the Royal Flush Pro Social Bar, Twitch goes absolutely ballistic. <laughs> Robbie hits a great flop here. After checking back the big blind, he hits bottom two pair. He bets 200,000. Taylor quickly folds. If you're on Twitch and you're following along, let us know who you're rooting for. You've been now watching an intense yeah. three-handed session on here. It seems like an overwhelming number of people are rooting for for Robbie. He's certainly the guy getting the most attention and the most discussion in yeah. the chat box. But I feel like, yeah, they probably are rooting for him. And he has been en endearingly nicknamed Mario. The mustache and red uniform will do that. <laughs> Johnny Cage now on the button. Yep. 8-6 off. All right, well, folds. then who does Jesse get to be? We got Mario, Johnny Cage, and you got to pick a third video game character. Who is Jesse? I don't know. Twitch, who is Jesse? Help me. Robbie now with seven deuce. Small blind. Picking out raising chips. He raises it up to 260, and now Jesse Rockowitz, who has yet to be named as a video game character, in the big blind with Jack-10. And I think this is an all-in spot, Tony. I don't know about that, Kane. Well, you know better than me. Yeah, you know what? With <laughs> <laughs> opening 100%, then I guess it is. We got a lot of people yelling Homer. I guess he's Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson, Homer huh? Simpson, according to Twitch. It's like the entire Twitch conversation now. It's just people typing in Homer. You know, there was a Simpsons bowling video game I used to play. <laughs> and it didn't take long before it just turned into homo and everyone hashtagging it, yep. Yeah, that was pretty inevitable, wasn't it? We, I guess we could have seen that coming. LOL Internet. Jesse Rockowitz, one of the really classy guys in poker. Yeah, he seems like a class act, man. He's been he's been very statue thus far at this final table, just taking everything in stride. Here he is with ace ten, and now we have twenty two big blinds, and this is a spot where I would like to see him raise. Raise call, yeah. However, it might send out a red flag, oh. considering he's been limping. Yeah, so I don't mind that. Considering the dynamic he's had with Taylor, I, I don't mind the limp, and Taylor quickly checks the Jack Seven suited. And he finds a seven. A nice and a three. What would be cool is if on Twitch we somehow could cast a vote to see how who people were rooting for. 
we can do that. We can we can get the straw poll in there. Can let's, we? Let's fire it in. Let's do that. All right. Look at this. In this this internet age, I, I just ask for something at the snap of the fingers. Tony, you can make it happen. Jesse, after limping, bets the minimum amount, and Taylor calls with middle pair, and Jesse gets lucky and turns an ace here, and let me tell you, when the blinds are, are five, uh, 50,000 and 100,000, every single hand matters, Tony, and, and turning an ace there is big for Jesse. Yes, it is. Boom. It's in the chat. All right, we'll check that in a moment. It's a good thing we don't allow write-ins, or it would just be pure <laughs> vulgarity. <laughs> Jesse fires half pot here, 220,000. Taylor reaching for chips, makes a call. Would you call there on the turn, Tony? That seems pretty close. Three of clubs on the river, and Jesse will be firing again. I like that we can just watch the poll in real time. Jesse really trying to balance his timing here and spot that is a, in my opinion, should be an, a pretty obvious bet, but he checks. I'm mystified. Wow, I guess he just. I mean, I guess if you give Taylor every combo of gut shot to continue on two streets, then checking is, is not that bad. However, I would, uh, the reason why I would bet that River Tony is because I would expect Taylor to peel the flop with a lot of ace X's. Mm -hmm. We'd already seen him peel the flop with an ace X against. Um, against Ravi uh, multiple times. So he, but how many uh, ace X's do you think he's checking pre-flop in that situation? I think the weaker ace X's. Think so? Uh, so the answer to our poll is clearly Ravi. It's almost an even split between Taylor and Jesse. It's about 25%, and Ravi's at 49. Uh, definite hero to the internet. He's been playing heroically. He certainly has. And, you know, his good plays and his bad plays have been very heroic. He is an exciting person to watch. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This isn't one of my limping hands. Robbie now with the ace 10 suited. Much to the delight yeah. of our We're going up. Twitch followers here. We are going up. He raises it to 360,000 chips. Jesse, <coughs> excuse me, Jesse will be likely folding the king three here based on what we've seen in the past. We've seen him limp and then fold to less than 3x in the past. Yep. Are you a big Simpsons guy growing up, Kane? Wasn't really a huge no. Simpsons guy, no. Man, I love that stuff. Simpsons came on when I was like mm, six years old or something. And back then it was like, at the very start, it was kind of a kid's show. And then in the sort of golden era, maybe season like three through eight, it was a combination of a really good kids show and something that was hysterical for 30 year olds. So I've been going back and watching them now and it's killing me in a totally different way. And you know, there's all these jokes that I obviously didn't get when I was nine years old. <laughs> I 
Someone in the chat says, No Simpsons, get out, commie. Yeah, what are you, a communist? No Simpsons. I actually prefer South Park of the of the cartoon. Also excellent. Between Simpsons Family Guy South Park, I I, I prefer South Park. Yeah. And he will make it two hundred thousand. I felt that uh, each of those shows has had kind of an era where it was at its strongest. Um, I think that South Park might might be the one with the highest like continue continual quality. Right. Um, Family Guy seemed like really good for the first five, uh, six seasons or so, and it's not bad now, but it's just kind of tapered off a little bit. Um, I, would, I, I would say that that Family Guy is a more a lot of the references deal with pop culture and and television. And television, yeah, whereas very much so. whereas South Park seems to be a little more political. Very political. And The Simpsons is kind of more character-driven. And it's just kind of eclectic in its references. Yeah. Ravi with top pair here. Jesse with bottom pair. And this blind versus blind confrontation. You know what, maybe, maybe Jesse is a little bit of a mix between like a Homer Simpson and, and a, a Barney Rubble. Or not Barney, who's Barney's friend? Barney from the Simpsons? Barney, no, from the Flintstones. Oh, uh... Is that Barney Rubble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rubble. Sorry, I just, I was still yeah. thinking in terms Yeah, of we're Simpsons. going is all over Barney the place. Barney and Fred, is that right? Barney and Fred, yeah, yeah and Barney is the friend. Okay. It's been, I'll tell you what, it's been a long time since I've seen an episode of The Flintstones. It's been a long time since I've seen that one. It would be interesting to go back and see if there are any political references in The Flintstones. Uh, there's the some Flintstone. racist stuff going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was watching John Oliver's show the other night, and they showed clips from uh, The Flintstones. And they were really? making jokes about you know Asians, and, and I want to say Fred or Barney's eyes all of a sudden turned slanted and everything. And... It was just like the kind of thing you would never see in 2015. Wow. When was that from? I don't even remember. When was the Simpsons? When was the Flintstones from? Like the 80s or something? I don't know. A little before my time. Sure. That, Certainly something that could be answered with Google. Yeah, that stuff would not would not fly today. No. Check. Check. Jesse check. Taylor check. On something that is, I think is supposed to be more of a of a family show. Yeah. And of course there were the the Jetsons. Yeah, the Jetsons. And if you want to go all the way back to Bugs Bunny, that stuff was racist as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of Bugs Bunny, uh -huh. Jesse could be the uh, the sheriff. What's what's his name? Yosemite Sam. Yosemite Sam. Didn't he have like the mustache that like hung down? A whole yeah, bunch? but look at Jesse has the mustache. He has a beard. Maybe we should maybe we should set up a Twitch poll. <laughs> <laughs> Barney Rubble, Homer Simpson, or Yosemite Sam. And they're still discussing that Ace Five hand in a small blind over at the Royal Flush Bar. Tuba is very confident that she would have elected to limp the hand simply because Jesse was in a spot where he was limping so many other hands, and it's just good for his overall range to to limp that hand as well. Here's we, one. Uh, Matt Levin on Twitter says, I vote for the guy who looks like Cheech Marin. Uh, ah, that's not a bad one. Yeah. Jesse now with a four deuce of spades on 25 big blinds on his button. Fold. Taylor with Ace 10, who just calls here. He's been pretty consistent. He's got something sneaky in mind. Uh oh. This could go wrong for him, Kane. Because I don't think Taylor is just calling there intending to limp call Ace 10. I could be wrong. 
but I think he might, you know, limp re-raise, limp jam, something like this. I mean, I could be absolutely wrong, but considering how much Ravi's been raising, if Taylor's being fed hands, then he might just blast. I think 30, 32 big blinds is a lot to to just go all in with here. I I agree. If it's, I were Taylor, know, I would I would be calling in this spot. If you think your opponent's just auto raising stuff like seven deuce and nine four, and I'm assuming he's being fed hands from somebody watching the stream. But it's it's still a spot where I expect Ravi to fold all worse and call all better. So I mean. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's just that there's 400,000 in the pot. Wow. And here we go. Taylor Parr at risk here. All in against our chip leader, Robbie. Robbie with the best of it with the ace queen. Taylor Parr with the ace ten. Well, Taylor's going to become the third player of the season to go back to back. He's going to need a ten. And ooh, the queen on the flop it all but ends it for him. He does not have a club, so he's going to need a runner, king jack, or 10 10. And it's a 9 on the turn. Taylor Parr is going to be our third place finisher. He's going to take $150,000. Great run and attempt at becoming a back to back champion. He played really well here today. Uh, unfortunately, at the end, he just got a little bit cooler there. But uh, I think he can go home from the California swing feeling really good about himself. Certainly. And, and yeah. like, like I stated earlier, I think that we've seen the most impressive play at this final table from Taylor. Yeah. Uh, the call down with the ace deuce is, is the hand that really, really stood out. I mean, getting to the river with the 5-6 and then electing to bluff and being right, triple barreling the 10-5 against Jesse, I think Taylor should be very proud with the way he's played. By the way, we are seconds away from you owing me $20. So close. Oh, no. The cards are going to keep going right now, and yeah. somebody's going to – it's going to be aces and kings the first hand. Let's just get it all in here. Oh, I'm just watching this thing tick down, <laughs> and I'm going to spend that sweet, sweet K money. <laughs> All right, well, these guys are on break for a little bit while they set everything up. We will come back and speak to you guys soon and check out the Heads Up match here at Thunder Valley. Okay, I completely lied. They are not on break. Often we have a money presentation once we get the heads up, but these guys are just going to keep on going here. And unfortunately, if this match doesn't end this hand, mm -hmm. I will have to a little mini muzzy money presentation to you, Tony, as I okay. get $20 out of my pocket to give to you for That's right. winning it. the over-under. Ship it. Now, first place here is a little over a quarter million dollars. It's two hundred fifty-one thousand four hundred fifty-seven dollars, whereas second place is approximately a hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. So. We're talking about a pretty big swing here. We're talking about a $75,000 swing between first and second. And, of course, if you win the event, you also get your buy-in to the WPT at Borgata for $15,400. Ravi going into the heads up with about a 3.5 to 1 chip lead over Jesse Rockowitz. We have Jesse raising five deuce. Robbie makes a call of two hundred thousand. 
Yeah. Robbie diamond. flops a flush I draw right away. Checks. He checks. Robbie I think he might just check jam on Jesse. I'm not really sure. Assuming Jack, yeah, I was gonna say assuming Jesse, Jesse bets, but she does not. Turn card is the seven of hearts. More outs on the turn. He quickly fires full pot. pot. Jesse will quickly fold. Yeah. Jesse will fold. Now this could go very quickly, Kane. As I mentioned before, we only play 30 minute levels when we're heads up. Jesse is entering this heads up match with about 22 blinds. I mean, not backing down. What would you be doing hand with hands like 8-4 offsuit with 21 big blinds heads up? Uh, I, pro I think I might fold or limp. I'm not sure that I would. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I don't think we need to raise every... Uh, maybe I'd limp that one. I'm a little surprised Jesse called here. He doesn't have that much room. Uh, and he, he went 2.6x, you know, and 9-6 nine, nine just doesn't flop that well. Yeah, I would have folded if I were Jesse. Yeah. If I were Ravi, I, I probably would have you lent up. Flop. I would have bet that well, flop. Well, I certainly sure would have bet Ravi. Flop. And as the clock has now ticked, 8.39. Got him. Tony, $20. there's your $20. Use it wisely. Officially not busto. Invest it well. <laughs> I'm just going to invest it in more DraftKings teams. Parlay that into some $20 bets about which ice cube the fly will will come to. Land on. Yeah. No, Ravi will take down that one with a bet. This is the Ravi Sundar show so far. You can see there, Jesse's largest cast was 721000 when he won a World Series bracelet in 2010. Man, that must be sweet when in one of those massive field donk fest over at the World Series. Back to the I've done terrible there. I don't know how much money I'm down lifetime at the World Series, but it's probably a bunch. Maybe not because <laughs> of the main event. Um, and I've made some money there, but everywhere else in the World Series, I've just done awful. What is your deepest run in the main event? I got 50th in 2010, so that was good for like 165-ish or something. So that'll that'll pay for a couple of summers. Well, Jesse here, he limps. Ravi looks like he's gonna make it 250. Jesse might just rip it on him. 260,000, so 2.6x. He's not folding. And he's all in. Robbie's going to call here, so Jesse will be at risk. Wow, I might beat you by five minutes. That's so dirty. I set such a dumb, dumb line, and I still won. You run bad game. Well, actually, no, because if Robbie wins, you win a bunch of money, right? Uh, yeah, I do all right. Sweet. <laughs> and it's a 10 3 3 flop, so it's going to need to be a king. Otherwise, Jesse's our second place finisher. Six on the turn. Six. We're down to three kings on the river. For Jesse, it's a king. The other oh, person dead. You feel it? Ravi, Ravi will be uh, <laughs> WPT <laughs> Rolling Thunder champion. Joe, let's see the river card. And the river is a six. six. Ravi has done it. He got sixth at the Bay 101 and first at Thunder Valley. Congrats to Ravi Thunar. He's going to make $251,257, and we will see him at the Borgata April 20th for the WPT Championship. Uh, <coughs> Ravi Sundar, new, new WPT champion, and that's exactly what he said throughout this whole tournament. I'm here to win it. And after coming in six last time, I mean, can you believe this? His first live tournament cash ever was less than a week ago.
He final tables Bay 101, gets six for 168,000. He comes out here and he says, you know what, this time I'm gonna win it, and he does just that. He seems like a real sweetheart too. Uh, Jesse Rockowitz, second place, 176,000. He came into this final table as the clear short stack, so I bet he feels just fine right about now. Eh, he gives it a little shrug, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, but I think he'll be okay when he looks back on all of this. But uh, big congrats to Ravi. You had, uh, you had us rooting for you, you had the entire internet rooting for you. Um, Way to go, man. What can you say? We'll yeah. see you around. Uh, thanks to everybody else who uh, tuned into the stream. Kane, thanks so much for joining me for the last eight hours in here today. And to everybody out there who watched it, uh, good night and good luck.